Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are looking at the book of Joshua, chapter 2, verse 8 to 21. I want to still dwell there uh, because it has a lot of things that we can learn from those scriptures. Verse 8 to 21, the Bible says, And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint before you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you, when you came out of Egypt, and what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Shihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we, ha we, we had heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you'll also, you, you'll also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. And that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, Our life for yours. If you utter not this our business, and it shall be. When the Lord has given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she led them down by a cord through the window for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourself there three days until the pursuers be returned, and afterward may you go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring, shall bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household, household home unto thee. And it shall be that whatsoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we shall be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, according to your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed. And she bound the circlet lane in the window. Our Heavenly Father, our prayer is that you will speak and minister to us today in a language that we can understand. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We may get seated and thank you, worship team. We might do something before we finish. So in our last time when we looked at the scripture from the book of Joshua, we discovered that this Rahab, and the title was, she is not the same girl. God administered salvation to her. And it was from the same scriptures that we read. But looking at the same scripture, you discover there is something else we can learn that is of great importance to us. So when you look at the scripture, you discover there are so many things that are happening. Although the war is not fallen, the war will come and fall in chapter 6. But at this point, there are things that are happening to encourage, to motivate Joshua and his group about what God was going to do for them. Remember that Rahab had nothing going for her. She had nothing to commend her to God. She was a Gentile. She was an idol worshiper. And she was a loose woman, if you like. She was not living right. But God, in his own way, after she had heard about God, she was saved by his grace. And because of being saved by grace, she, brought into, she was brought into the family of Israel. 
She was made a partaker of all the covenants and the promises of God. And she became a mother of Boaz, the great-great-grandmother of David, and an ancestor of our Lord Jesus Christ. The point is, because of the grace of God, she was pulled from nothing into somebody. She was pulled to become in line with the promises of God. She was pulled and became a part of the great genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to say the same thing happens to all of us. When we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we are made right with him, when we become partakers of all God's promises and all the covenants that he has laid before, the promises of Abraham becomes our share. The promises that he later told Isaac becomes our share. The promises that he later gave to uh, uh, Jacob becomes our share. So our life from that point on, we become inheritor. And you know, God is so unique. When he blesses you, you become blessed. And he doesn't carry you with a color. Let me share a joke with you before I continue. I visited Mbea in Tanzania. In Mbea, Tanzania, I'd gone to join a friend of mine. We went to Bible school together in Sweden in 1977. And he has become an international evangelist. But every time we talk, he's all over Bangladesh, India, and so on. So finally, he said he's in Tanzania. I said, hey, that is too close. After being away with each other for many years, because the last time we saw each other was April of 1978. We have not seen each other again, but we keep on communicating. So when we landed there, he took me one day for lunch, um, and I met uh, one European uh, person who was uh, originally from Europe, uh, who had uh, lived in uh, Namibia, and another one who was coming from Pennsylvania in the U.S. Uh, these, these characters were good people. The one from Namibia, God told him to leave Namibia and go north. So this guy left Namibia, and he was coming asking the Lord where. By the time he got to Tanzania, he, had, he didn't have a lot of resources, and he came with his family, his wife and children. Not, not children, children. Unajua watoto, hata weo kitu wa mtoto na mama yako, it sounded very funny. So, because I saw some of those children. Ni watu wazima, hata hotel itulikula, ilikuwa ya one of the child. Musiana wake moja. But this, this is the story. When he landed in Tanzania and he didn't have money, he did not even feel that like Tanzania was. He, kept, he came to Kenya and lived somewhere in Dagureti. Somebody had given him a house. But he felt the Lord saying, go south. Go back south. So he landed in Bear. Now, the other one came from Pennsylvania this year because of Corona. He was running away from Corona and the judgment, according to him, that is going to fall the United States of America, and in particular because of COVID. Now, this was a statement. I thought it was very interesting. So here we are. There is a conversation. And some of you believe other people other than your pastor. Me, I tell you, but you don't believe me. You believe other prophets. And you know, it will confuse you. Nikombia ukule maindi wenda uchangaza na maharagwe ambayo nimbichi. Tumbo itakuletea shida. Siu, kule ile nimekupatia imekauka. So anyway, this, this, this couple were running away because if, if you get being a, a chanjo, chanjo ya corona, if you get it, it would clear your DNA. DNA, out of nayo. I know you have heard those stories. You have also heard that anybody who gets an injection, injection will die in two years. You have heard all that. And some of you have believed it. So I'm telling you truth. There is a couple that I saw. They have believed it. But then I asked them, why did you leave your children? Why do you want to save your life and not save your, your children? But the statement I love best was what the evangelist told them. He said, oh, I'm so amazed. You still carry a DNA? Oh, mine when I received the Lord Jesus Christ, all the DNA of Adam left. And my DNA now is Jesus. No, and nothing can erase that. I just wanted to tell you that. When Rahab came to the Lord, the DNA was robbed. And he got a new DNA. 
Now she was in line now because when God sets you free, you are free indeed. And that's what happened to Rahab, to Rahab at that time. And therefore today I want us to consider closely something that is here and it is recorded. If you look at verse number 15, it says, So she let them down by a rope through the window, for the house she lived in was part of the city wall. Verse number 18. It says this, Unless when we enter the land, you have tied this colored cord in the window through which you let us down, and unless you have brought your father and mother, your brothers and all your family into the house. Again, that scarlet thing is repeated. Verse number 21. Agreed, she replied, let it be as you are. So, so she led them away and they departed. And she tied the scarlet cord in the window. It is that scarlet that I thought it is good for us to look at it a little bit and see what, what significance does it have for us this morning. For me, this scarlet thread or rope is filled with many blessings. Many, many, many blessings. So we study this thread and see all the characteristics of this sacred thread. Number one, we want to see what does this mean? What did it, what did it imply? What did it show? What did it depict? In verses 8 to 11, verses 8 to 11 where we read, Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear. They are melting in fear. So verse 10, 11, and 12 they, they have something they are trying to, to tell us. Verse 10, 11, and 12. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Shion and Og, the two kings and the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. Verse 11. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God... In heaven, is God in heaven above and on earth below? Verse 12. Now then, please swear with me that you will show kindness to my family because I've shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign. Her words declare her faith in God. And we saw that. You remember what I told you? I told you, maybe the question would be, was she lying or was she saying the truth? And I told you, as far as I'm concerned, she was telling the truth. They were looking for men. Men had left. But the brothers were with her. She was not looking. She had her brothers in the Lord. Her, she had been changed. She was just waiting for them. No wonder she says, Sasa If you go and come back, remember me and bring salvation to, to me. So she is asking the spy to save her and her family. And the spies promised Rahab, that when Israel attacks the city of, of Jericho, all those in her house at that time will be saved. So that scarlet thread that hung down the walls of Jericho for Rahab has many things and much to say. The scarlet cord was probably just a common length of flex rope that Rahab had made and, and died right on her rooftop. All that was a piece of rope. But it pictures more than that. Because some of us think it is a small ka, 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 kauzi. Kauzi kama kakushona shindano. Kashindano. But this is a rope. Remember she dropped them with. They went down with the rope. It was not just a small string. It was a real rope that was there for safety. She hung it there. So first, let's notice the thoughts that we, we can see plainly. The word cord in verse 15 refers to a rope. The word itself can also mean something else. It can also speak of a company, a group of people. Thus, it refers to the braided rope and not just a single thread. So it is a rope that had a few things. It is like those ropes that we used to make 
when we were in, high, in, in primary. You know, primary, we used to go and do hard work, hard work, art, art work. And it was to, uh, we would do those ropes and, and things like those. The cord was just more than just a length of thread. It had to be strong enough to hold the weight of a man. And it had to be long enough to reach the bottom of the wall for safety. Because they were not going to jump. They were going to use it for safety. So the scarlet thread represents, represented Rahab and her lifestyle. And we have all heard that the red, the red, the red light district. You know, when I was in Sweden, one time I, I decided to go to London. And I was given a lift up to Amsterdam. And um, <laughs> just like curiosity, I'm in my 20s, early 20s. Oh, the place looks great. So I decided to hang around. My, the ferry was to be in the evening. I had almost eight hours to, to know Amsterdam properly. And you know, you, know, you, you know, for you to know where you are, you have to go straight. Do you understand? So that you go straight to the end, then you come back. Then you do another straight, then you come back. I, I, I used to come to Nairobi and get lost. But I discovered straight, Ukiwa Hilton, straight. Itakuchukua Luduri, straight. Utakuta River Road, straight. You will get to OTC, straight. Masako here. It has to be straight. Anytime I miss the straight, I'll get lost. So here I am in Amsterdam. And I decided, and you know the other thing we also know. If you want cheaper things, you don't go above Moy Avenue, right? You go down. You go down from Tomboya. If you want cheaper, cheaper things, you go to Gekomba. So from where I am, in, this is the railway station, I look and I want to discover where that can be. So I saw a street and I decided to walk on that street. Me, what I saw, I have never seen it. I only used to hear that there, that there are some shops that do sex. And you enter in, you pay whatever you are paying, but now they are demonstrating. You are seeing it on the screen. Do you know I ran so fast, I entered into a movie theater, paid, sat down, and I would not even understand what the movie was all about. I was sweating. Hey! So when you hear there are some place called Red Districts, they are there. That's not what I, want, I wanted to talk about. Let me not wander and start sweating here again. So down through the ages, scarlet has become a color associated with evil. Scarlet is a strong, vivid red. And as a noun, it refers to a color. But as an adjective, it speaks of immorality and wickedness. There's someone who wrote a book called The Scarlet Letter. His name was Nathaniel. In the book that he wrote, there is a character of a woman called Hester Payne. Hester becomes pregnant while she's away from her husband. And she is arrested and she is sent to prison for that crime. When she was released, she was forced to wear a scarlet letter upon the breast of her garment. It is the letter A that was there. And it stands for adultery. That scarlet letter pictured her in sin and her secrecy in refusing to reveal the name of the baby's father. Baby's father. Babu, kiyo na mtu hasemi baba ya mtoto ni nani? Uyo jamaa, yale mambo ya limtenda haiku wa mazuri sana. So she refused. Ata afadhali ni fungwe. Sita sema uyo ni nani. So throughout the book, if you read that book, it talks about A, picturing her sin. So again we go back. The scarlet rope that, that hung from Rahab's window speak volumes about Rahab and her character. Even then, it reminded everyone that she was a sinner. 
It would have been easy to see it hung against that wall. It was easy. The color was easy. It was easy to associate and know what kind of a person used to live there. The scarlet thread showed Rahab's sin. Of course, this is what is all of us. We are all sinners. That's the condition we find ourselves. But the scarlet lead also represents something else. Scarlet or crimson is the color of blood. The scarlet thread that hung from Rahab's window was the color of blood. It is interesting to note that the, it means our salvation, our salvation took the same form, red. Her lifestyle could be represented by the color of scarlet, but her salvation is also represented by the color of the blood. The scarlet represents something else, the color of the promise that she was given that she would be saved. The scarlet thread that hung from Rehab's window represent the blood. It represents the scarlet red blood that runs throughout the scriptures from Genesis through 23 uh, verse 21 when the Lord takes an animal and slaughters so that he can make some garments for Adam and Eve. It runs through the scripture. The blood, the blood, the blood. The scarlet thread of temptation waves itself into the very fabric of the Bible so that the book would unravel if the scarlet thread was removed. I see it is, like I said in, in sacrifice in the book of Genesis. I see it as it is demanded from the book, the law. I see it in the daily life of people of Israel. I see it in the preaching of the prophets. I see it as it waves itself in and out of the characters and places and events of the Old Testament. I see it, waves its way from Genesis to Malachi. I see it having its own climax in the Gospels. Then I see it as it reaches you and reaches me from Calvary, the blood of Christ that came to rescue us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The scarlet thread was a picture of redemption. It was a picture of salvation that comes to the sinner through the shed blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. All the way from Genesis to Revelation, there is a, lee, a river of blood that flows from page to page to page. That mighty river of blood teaches us the only way of salvation is by the blood of Jesus. No wonder the Bible tells us in Hebrews, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Of sin. Salvation does not come through the works of our hands. It does not come through the dead religion. It does not come from profession, uh, professions and promises. Salvation always comes through the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. According to the Bible, therefore, all are sinners, and all sinners are under the wrath of, the, of God, and all sinners need to be saved because they cannot save themselves. And that is what Rahab discovered. Rahab discovered that she cannot save herself. She only need him, the Lord who can save us. And just as it was in Rahab's case, our salvation took the same form, and we were sinners, but the Lord came down and died for us so that you and I can have life and have the abundance of it. The theme of the Bible is the blood. The Old Testament is blood of goats and sheep and so on. In the New Testament is the blood of Jesus. That is what it is taught. And a singer gave us this illustration. He says, what can wash away my sin? And he answered back, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Then he asked another question, what can make me whole again? When I falter and fail, then he answered, he said, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Then he got so excited, he said, then, oh, precious is the flow. Because he, so, he got so excited. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So that scarlet shows us 
the issue of the blood. Number two, what the thread demanded. What the thread demanded. When the spies left Rahab's home, they told her to tie the scarlet thread in the window of her house. Verse number 18. The scarlet cord would tell the invading Israel that everyone in that home was under the protection of the promise of God and was not to be destroyed. Before that thread could secure Rahab and her family, it had to be tied in the window. Thus, it, the thread, while free and full of promise, it did no good until it was utilized. So there is a demand of that blood. You know, somebody says, Kenyans, we are all born again, especially all politicians are born again, and they have a testimony. They all say, God is good all the time. And you cannot stop them because the Bible says, let every, everything that has breath praise. But that is not salvation. There is a demand. There is a demand. You know, as, as, as the coming of the Lord draws nigh, I find something very, very interesting that is happening in the world today. And I, or in the night, throughout the night and this morning, I was thinking, and I think I have said it here, that one of the, the dangers of our Christian walk with the Lord is to refuse to follow him and follow his instruction. I know the instructions of the Lord are tough. And also not to feel pressurized by people. You know people have a way of pressurizing us. If you go to a place where the preacher is selling water and the salmon is so nice, I feel like if I came here and I sold water, I'll make something. But I have to be so determined that I want to serve the Lord because I love him, not because of what I can get from the members. But you see, pastors, we struggle a lot. Deliverance Church Constitution has no bishop. So, where did it come from? Do you know where it came from? One day, our bishop asked us, Kira mutu wananiita bishop. Simuniita bishop. So, tukafanya ya bishop. Then, Bishop Mark came, because the, the bishop was a bishop, then Bishop Mark was made a bishop. The seat there is very hot. He also made us bishops, apostolic bishops. Now we have regional bishops. Then I went to Kitale. I met my bishop when they were shy. Because they are called bishops. Some regional overseers, they are called bishops. And I told them, Enda, ni function si title wewe umeitwa bishop. Simama pale mpigo picha na mabishop wengine. Hata labda wana makanisa madogo. What I'm saying is that the Pentecost churches in Africa did not have a bishop as a leader. It's only the Anglican, the Methodist, and the Catholic Church. AIC didn't. Furu Gospel didn't. KAG didn't. Even in their constitution, it is the general superintendent. I'm saying this to say this, that a lot of us, we compromise or we borrow from others or we want to do it because it was done by others. And if they did it well and you liked it, you want to do it. You don't even ask, is it godly? Is there a God here? Is it milazetu zakikuyu? Is it godly? Eh. Nimesikia kasaudu kananembia uzipite hiyo njia. Hiyo ni murefu sana. So, the thread came with the several demands. Let me share with you some of those demands. Demand number one, the thread demanded faith. The blood of Jesus is there, but for you to get what the blood can do for you, 
You need faith in him. The scarlet thread demanded faith. And it took faith to tie that cord in the window and to believe the promise of the spies. Verse number 14. After all, in a sense, those spies were the enemies of Rahab. They were the enemies of Rahab. But it took faith to take them at their word. She tied the cord on the window of her house. She believed. And she was saved. Does it, is it not the same thing that happens to you? You believe, then you are saved. You believe, then you are saved. To be saved from sin, a lost sinner must believe the promises God has made concerning the blood of Jesus. There is a demand. We don't only sing about it, but there is a demand the blood is demanding from us. You can sing and sing. But you have to believe the power that the blood of Jesus Christ has. I wonder if Rahab felt foolish as she tied that cord in her window. Nothing has happened. It's only a promise. I wonder. Was, he, was she thinking, am I normal? But you remember what she told them. We shook. We are not alive. We fainted. We are dead. A dead person will not think what others are thinking. Ama umpereka mtu wa mekufa, arafu ananza kuwa na shida vile munafikiria. Wachani kusema hivyo, akonga gonga sanduku. Wachani, akigonga sanduku, ata muhubiri, atatoroka. Faith. I need to have faith. And I think Rahab had faith in that God. And it was not crazy. She was dead. She had fainted. She, did, she wanted to be saved. And nothing would stop her. So she had to put that thing. I, I wonder, is there something that causes you to look like you are not of this world? Because if there is, keep it open. We used to put Jesus saves. Until we discovered every boy in the high school also put Jesus saves. So that when he, he, but when we started, it was the unaonekania mbali. Wale wakuokoka, wale. In actual fact, you would go to any high school and you ask the saved and they will come, the saved. But anybody me, amejichanganya, hata kuja. So one day I'm visiting Eldoret, Highlands High School. And I asked a sister that I knew, nataka yule dada na ito frani ya meokoka. They laughed at me. Huyo aja okoka hapa. Oh, because we came from the same village. Salvation. And Rahab was not embarrassed nor ashamed to tie the cord because she was told, you can have it in the house, but unless you tie it, there will be no effect. We can have the blood of Jesus, but until we believe it and go towards it, they do not. Remember the children of Israel in Exodus. They are told to do something. Do you think they were foolish when they started painting? Instead of painting paint, anaweka brush, anapaka dam. Don't you think people thought, crazy people? These guys are crazy. No wonder we say you people are crazy. Dam. Yeah? But there are some people, the Bible records, that they didn't do it. They died. And they had to paint where they were told. You know, you remember Peter telling Jesus, Nioshe hata migu. Nioshe hata mwili. But Jesus says, Apana, ni migu. Iyo ikuna uchafu, di unataka kuocha. Na Petro na sama, sasa nioshe hata mwili yote. Sio mwili yote, kide kinataka, ni migu. Damu, hawakuwa wa ikanyange, walikuwa waende chini yake. Kwa hivyo kama kuna mtu mjinga alipaka hata chini, anasema toto anointing, toto painting, haweka kila mahali. Ya chini ya imusaidi. And there are some people, the blood of Jesus is not helping us because we are not mixing it with faith with what God has told us to do. Hallelujah.
The scarlet thread demanded urgency. If there is something that I think the Lord is telling us, is the urgency of coming to know the Lord Jesus. I was here in the first service. There is an urgency. People need to come to the Lord. Come unto me. Urgency. There is an urgency. The spies told Rahab to tie the cord in the window when they came into the land. Verse 18. You will notice verse 21. She did not wait. She tied the cord in the window immediately. Hey, you want to be saved? Immediately. Rahab did not wait. Aone. Kwa sababu kama agiangoja nyumba izungu kwe iboromoke. Angiakua na shida. Na hake ilikuwa ju. Na niliwambia, I told you the last time I shared here, that her house which was on top never crumbled. Because the cord was tied there. The Lord protected the whole. There is an urgency. She did not wait. She tied the cord in the window immediately. And this pictures a sense of urgency in the part of Rahab. She was tired of the life she lived. She wanted a new life and she wanted now. Lord, I want it right now. Give it to me. So it is, it is with the salvation God of us. It is not tomorrow, my brother, listening to me from where you are. Salvation is today. It is now. You don't have a tomorrow. I listened to a joke yesterday. It was not a joke. It was very serious. Somebody they meet at Kamaki there, they say, Wacha tuchomeshe nyama, alafu tuje tukule. Have you, si, si, tukitoka ruadia tunachomaga nyama njiani. We, tunasema, pali tuende tukutane, pali tutakulia hiyo nyama. So, si wame chinja ya kanyama, kame katwa, kame chomwa vizuri. Yule alisema atalipa, hakurudi. Asante. Yule alikuwa kinunuliwa, akakula. Unfortunately, Uyo ni kukufa alikufa. Walipo wachana. Nituhi hie kanyama. Ye yeah, anayenda kukufa. We utakula kanyama. Kwa ni nyama inachoma kwa mdagani? How long does nyama kuiva ina? That's how your life is. Iyo dakika iyo. Tuachane kabla ujafika pale. Usikie. So salvation is for now. Do you want to go to heaven? There is an urgency for you. So watch a COVID. Unajua COVID imetustuwa. But I have also been told by someone, and I believe him, that no one will die of COVID unless God wants him and his appointment has come. Ni wangapi tumekojeka COVID na bado tunasurvive. Hey! Tupo tu. Lakini kama parapanda yako imepigwa wakati ule. Wengine hawata sikia, wewe tu, diyo utasikia. You know, we, we, we buried a lady in Langata and we were told a very interesting story. Her husband, when she was, her husband was dying, told the, hus the wife, Naona Malaika, I can see two men there. They are so smart and they are calling me and they are dressed in white. So the wife is asking, the, the, the man is asking, Situende, let's go together. And the, 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 the mother, the, the, the wife says, but they are not calling me. I cannot even see them. So what do I do? The husband asked. Then the wife says, when they call you again, go. So they called again, and the guy closed their eyes, and that was it. The wife just covered him because she knew when you are called, you don't have a tomorrow. After Sisi Vijana, we don't have a tomorrow. It is in his hands. So salvation, there is an urgency of salvation. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange of his soul? Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. I would rather say this to you. Seek the Lord when you are able. Call upon him when you hear me. The scarlet thread demanded commitment. Commitment. It took an outstanding commitment on the part of Rahab when she tied that cord in her window. She was making a statement. She was saying, I choose the God of Israel over the gods of my people. I choose the people of Israel 
over my people. I am willing to commit to following this God I have only heard about. Based on a promise I cannot verify. I believe what I have heard about. I believe in him. If he will not have me or if he will not save me, then I will perish. If I perish, I will do so believing in God of Israel. What a commitment. Gone. Gone. That's the story of Ruth. Ruth, Rudy Quenu. Ruth tells Naomi, mm -mm, don't try that. Me, I'm not. Where you go, I go. Jaribu. Then <laughs> Naomi thought in Muchezo. Where you die, I die. Sasa mtu akikwambia mtakufa pamoja. And then Naomi thought it in Muchezo. You are God from today will be my God. And then your people will be my people. What a commitment. And that's what Rabbi say. That thread demands a commitment. That God, I will love you. That if there will be no heaven, I will still bet, be better men living a good Christian life here on earth. But I want to believe in God. What a commitment. Beyond that, she wanted to see her family saved. Do you want your people to be saved? Or you want to go to heaven alone? She was saying, my father's family. And these guys tell them, not only your father's family, anybody who comes in, in that house, at that time, when we come, will stand saved. We will help him. Number three. What the thread delivered. What the thread delivered. When the spies left Rahab, she was tying that cord in her window. All she had heard was a promise and a hope that it would be kept. A short time later, Israel invaded Canaan. They came to Jericho. They marched around that city once every day for six days. In the seventh day, they marched around it seven times. I'm telling you, Rahab was watching them, saying, Watch out. Watch out. You know, I think she was preaching to the others. So, Mukuja kwa nyumba. Watch out. Ah, jama. Ati wanaend around. Awa. Hey. Si muingie. Jameni, there is safety in my house. And I think they thought, you are crazy. But these guys were just mad. They were not talking with anybody. And then on the seventh day, they go there seven times. And thinking it is a joke, Rahab is still waiting for her salvation. They shout and every other building crumbles apart from us. She gets to the, to the scarlet and comes down alive and well. Heaven, whether you like it or not, will be there. Safety, whether you know it or not, is there. Do you believe in it? So the blood of Jesus, the scarlet, is, has something to deliver to us. The scarlet thread delivered salvation, protection, security to Rahab and to all those who believed in his promise. And the blood of Jesus does the same to us. It delivers to you protection. It delivers to you security. It delivers to you the promises that he has made for you. When we were coming from Kitale, one of us, one of us they had a, an accident. The car was written off. But the guys are okay. It's the protection of God. The devil is a liar. We had gone to celebrate, but he didn't want us to get back home well. Lest you misunderstand, neither Rahab nor anyone in her home was actually saved by the scarlet thread. After all, it was just a kamba. So don't forget it is God who saves us, not those things, not the symbols that are there. It was just symbolic. My salvation comes from the Lord who makes the heaven and the earth. It doesn't come from people, but I will receive the promise. But the promise is not my salvation. I will say God who saves me, who is my protector. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I love this. The blood of Jesus. Yes, I'm still talking about the blood of Jesus Christ. Everyone who comes to God through faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross comes under the protection of the blood of Jesus. 
Their sins are washed away, the book of Colossians. They are eternally forgiven, Psalms 103, verse 12. They are brought closer to God, Ephesians 2, 13. They are taken into God's family, Romans 8, 15. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ does. They are given eternal life, John 10, 28. They are eternally secured in their salvation, the blood of Jesus. So thank God for the precious blood of Jesus. Are you washed in the blood? Are you washed in the blood? Are you washed in the blood? I want to ask the, the worship team to come and help me. We make that confession. What Rahab did was a very simple thing. All she did was tie a scarlet cord on her window. Then she waited. It was so simple for an action, yet it guaranteed her salvation and the salvation of all of us who come under his protection. The salvation God offers you and offers me in Jesus Christ is just as simple. All what he's asking you to do is believe. If you can only believe that you are a sinner and Jesus Christ is a savior and his blood was shed for you and for me and that you ask him to come into your heart, he will. And from that point on, your life will be different. And if you have not done that, you can do it even today. I want to ask every one of us to stand if we can. And we are asking ourselves, what can wash away my sin? That's a song we want to try. Maybe a stanza or two, and then we'll pray because of time. Can you give it up on the screen? Nothing but the blood of Jesus can make me whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is our. Jesus, I come to you. I know I'm a sinner and you are a savior. Save me from today. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I'm a child of God in Jesus' name. Maybe you came to church or wherever you are and as we talked about the protection that comes from the Lord, you are crying out, Lord, I need your protection or provision or security. Whatever it is, we can appropriate what the blood of Jesus did for us to over 2,000 years ago, even today. I don't know what it is. But if there is anything that you are asking 
that thread, that thread that we have talked about, the blood of Jesus. You are saying, yes, I know the blood of Jesus does not only wash, it sustains, it cleanses, it purifies, it provides, it gives me victory. If that is the kind of prayer that you, you pray, I'd like to join you. So if you lift up your hand, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. I might not know everything that uh, is going through you, but I'll pray for you. I, Heavenly Father, as I pray for the hands that are lifted up, I want to connect myself with you and your people. I pray that God, even that which we don't know, but they are going through, we are calling the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus did not only fight battles for the children of Israel while in Egypt, because when you delivered them, you destroyed. Heavenly Father, we are also praying as we lift up our hands. There are some of us that you are going to deliver, but there are some destruction that is going to happen in the devil's kingdom. Maybe he touched us on the wrong place. Maybe he touched our finances. Maybe he, maybe he touched our health. Maybe he touched our family. But Lord, we know today as you deliver us, something, something is going to happen on the opposite side. Because as you deliver us, it is not easy. But Father, we know the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violent will take it by force. We want to take our promises because your promises are true. They will come to pass in our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, I know there will be testimonies here of what you're going to do because we know the thread, the thread, the thread, what it demands, it demands the blood. What it demands, it demands faith and other demands are there. But finally, it delivers to us the provision that we call you for. So we thank you for healing among us. We thank you for provision among us. We thank you for your security among us. And to that we give you honor and we give you praise. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you, you know the good thing about, about um, the people in the tent and the people at home. Maybe you are still taking a cup of tea. But you have prayed that prayer. Those that are in the church and those that are in the tent and those that are on the corridor, we, we would ask if you can connect with any of the pastors here. Before you go, I know someone is going to help you. But for you that are at home, there is a number that can really help us. The number up here can really help us. If you use that number, call and somebody will be ready to help you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. And may your week be victorious. Amen.